Good afternoon. It's March 24, 2006. And this afternoon, Tom, I'm Mayo Livingston, and this afternoon, Tom Bush and I, on behalf of the Southwest Georgia Regional Library, will be interviewing Gene Olinger on his experiences in World War II. Meanest man in town. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he went in the Navy. <laughs> Gene, tell us when you joined the Navy. Um, I think I, you told me. I, I gave it, you the date. And you did. It was I, uh, And uh, I got 44. it right. 44. And, uh, but I don't have them on. The, uh, and you and Oscar Jackson, I believe, joined together. He right. He was 17 camp. years old. Went to Camp Air. And uh, 1944. Okay. The, uh, and went to, night, uh, went to Camp Perry and picked up cigarette butts, and I didn't even smoke. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, was that, so, uh, that was boot camp? That was boot camp. Yeah. All right. Yes, you did what they said when they wanted to, and that was it. And uh, you were assigned to a mine sweep on the pivot. Yeah. And uh, got to know the old man real good. That uh, uh, that was captain of the pivot, and uh, I was raised in uh, around uh, Florida, around uh, Crooked Lake, and I I could swim all day long. I hold my breath about. Four minutes back in them days, and uh, he wanted to get me uh, equipped where I could he could put a mask on me and, and uh, I could go over and dive in under. If a cable, when you were running a minesweeper, a cable couldn't get caught on the on the sounding gear or anything like that, and somebody better go ahead. Somebody better uh, cut the darn thing off for it to blow up the ship. Tell us how a minesweeper, you, you, you sent out these cables. Yeah, and they got uh, <clears throat> things, uh, metal things that ride along in the water and hold it out there, but hold it just under the water. And they, uh, these, well, we got into this more at the end of the thing, but there was a China Sea Sweep. And those mines had been in there since 1926, which is my birthday, when I was born. And they were rusted and had these cables went down the ground and uh, they kept them from going and that was to keep people from coming in there. But anyway, those uh, cables go out and they made them pop up and it had cutters on it like that that would cut the cable and they would pop to the top. Now your job on occasion was to cut those cables or when they wouldn't get... If they got wrapped around anything on the, on the ship. Um, they'd send me down and they had to stop and wait. And they'd send me down to unravel it or do whatever it took to get it done. Well, you didn't have a tank? Or did, did you yeah, have, you yeah. Had, I had a tank. And, and fin? Yeah. But that was, a, that was it because, you know. But you learned to do that at Key West? Yeah. yeah. I had fun. I enjoyed it because I could swim real good. And I enjoyed it. Uh, being an underwater demolition because nobody would mess with you. Because <laughs> we couldn't blow it up with. <laughs> Were you the only one on the, on the minesweeper? On that minesweeper. That was something they, I think they, he was experimenting with it ahead of time. And because uh, most of their divers at Key West uh, had to go through all their schools and everything. And they had to wear all that equipment and mask and helmets and go down with the hoses and tell them what to do and this, that, and other. And with me, I could just go down and pop back up and not worry about it. You know what you never know, did do the heavy? <clears throat> That's too much for me. <laughs> if I couldn't swim, I don't want to mess with it. But... And then you you you, tramp, you were on the minesweeper and you went to the South Pacific. Yep. Through the Panama Canal. Yeah. Well, that was the worst smelling place I've ever heard. Now, I'm a Christian, and I, that was the first time I'd gotten out, and we stopped in Panama, and uh, when you walked into the, the, the little village and everything there, the women were standing outside and trying to pull you in their, their, their shacks so they could get you to go to bed with them and they could make money off of you and, 
and it stung so bad, I said that was the worst thing I'd ever run into. Well, when did you leave Oscar? Did y'all left out the boot? We left each other when we left boot camp, and I never didn't know where he went or what he did or anything like that. Until you got back home? Yeah. The, uh, I knew he made it and didn't have any problems, you know. Neither one of you, you know, right out of high school, 17 years old, right out of Bainbridge, Georgia. <laughs> Could whip the world. <laughs> <laughs> and you were, no, you went to Hawaii, Hawaii then? Yeah, we went to Hawaii and uh, they had already, you know, bought them to uh, Pearl Harbor and everything and, and ships. I got to see the battle cruisers and everything that sunk. And, that was rough because the bodies were still floating around because they couldn't get them out of the ships. And they just stayed in there. And you, you went on to the... Uh, we, made, we made some sweeps around some of the islands for landing landing crews to go in. You know, their, their uh, landing barges. Yeah. And I had to go in and blow up places where they had these concrete points up there for them to hang up on so they couldn't make an invasion and everything. And I'd go in ahead of time and blow that stuff up. And that's where they'd come by and pick me up. That's what you were telling me. Yeah. They, they didn't leave you out there. I mean, no, if they couldn't pick me up, I had to stay there. If it got too too much firepower and everything, I had to sneak back in and stay there until they'd come by me later on that night. Were you out there by yourself? Yeah. There you go. That, I was lucky they let me go by myself and do what I wanted to do. It ain't like, you know, having a group or something like that. Where was that most of Saipan? You mentioned Saipan. Saipan and, uh, and uh, Iwo Jima and then went to Okinawa. Were you at Iwo Jima? Mm -hmm. Didn't get up on the flag waving things because I wasn't there then, but I mean, I went in to blow up the things where they can make the landing crafts go in. And then you went from there to Okinawa? Uh, yeah, we went to Okinawa. And at that time they had the uh, suicide planes flying in there in, in Okinawa Harbor. They put our little minesweeper up at the front. And we had all of us were putting off gas, uh, I mean smoke, to, so nobody could see where anything was. And we were out there in the front looking at the planes flying around. They were going to dive down and try to hit something. And the, they couldn't see where to hit because the smoke was out there and they wasn't going to waste the airplane on little old mines. We were sitting out there. The only thing they could see, they, you put the smoke out there. The front part of it. In other words, if you got a fire or something like that, someone's got to start it. And we were out here. But there was other sh our smoke there, and then the other ships were doing the same well, thing. Was it another mine sweeper there? Uh, don't think so. No. We had uh, uh, the battleships and all the sort of stuff they had, because they were getting fixed up where we could go into uh, into Hiroshima, in the in Bay, Japan, and all that. Now I was out from Hiroshima when they dropped the atomic bomb in Hiroshima. Uh, two days later, we pulled in there and they, and they put me off and I went into uh, where we had information the Australian prisoners were in a, in a prison. And <coughs> Hiroshima's like mountains on each side. I went through there, and that was the most horrible thing I ever saw. People walking, and the bodies, uh, skins would be falling off, and, and they were like in, in, a, in a daze. And I, at first, when I went in there, I was scared. I was going, you know, somebody tried to kill me. They didn't even tell nothing. I don't even think they even knew I was there. It was like they were walking through, um, like they were zombies and didn't know what was going on. But anyway, I got through there, went across, and got the Australians out of their prison and took them over to the, where a pier was so we could get them out of there. They wanted to, uh, 
fix me up where I could go to Australia with them and they were going to make a king out of me. I knew they were just <laughs> happy. But they, they survived the, the bomb. Well, they were on the other side of the mountain. If they, oh, oh, I see. See, the mountain kept the, the prisoners yeah. from being next to the bomb, but that's as close as we could get to them. Well, did they ever check for radiation or anything like that? That bothered me for a long, long time. Because I knew I went in there and I knew there was radiation there. And, uh, but I went in and got out. That's one thing I've always had smarts enough to do. Not stay in a place that's got radiation or stay in a place that's not too healthy to be in. You well, know? Gene, when you got me, say you got them out, did you take them back to your ship or no? No, we took them out to the, uh, where, they, where they brought me in and put me off. There was a pier right there, and we took them to the pier, and the other ships come in and picked them up. The wall was open. Well, yeah. Completely over after that bomb blew up. Heck, nobody's going to fight anybody with that. Well, we got a mess in, in right now. Uh, the Japanese, their, their whole philosophy was to kill all of us. Americans or soldiers or whatever was having to be in there, and they, if they if they if they died in battle, they had all these women up there waiting on them when they'd all go to heaven. And these Muslims have come up with the same thing. And our country today is making a grave mistake because they got the same attitude. A Muslim, if you can't if, if he can't convert you, it's his duty to kill you. In that, uh, on the radio the other day, I was talking about this Muslim that has changed back over and been converted. And they're holding court on him, and I expect them to chop his head off. Well, what you're saying is the Japanese would have had his suicide. They didn't care whether they died or not. No. When you all hit the beach, no, well, if it was it. coming, yeah, this was the first invasion was going to be in November or something like that. Something like that. And uh, so many of you guys have said the same thing and told us you were glad they dropped the bomb. If they hadn't done it, uh, we probably, I wouldn't be sitting here. I've, I've said this before, but uh, they had enough Purple Hearts ready for the invasion of Japan that they have never had to make another Purple Heart since. They used them for Korean War, Vietnam War, the Iraqi yeah. Wars, and they still have the same supply of Purple Hearts that they had yeah. you know, waiting for... Uh, the invasion. Now after we got them out, uh, we went on what we call the China Sea Suite. That that area in there, never any shipping in there, been in there, anything. And I hated that because the war was over and we were sweeping mines and they were popping up, blowing up. And it was just as dangerous or more dangerous uh, making that China Sea Suite than it was during the combat and everything. Cause but you had to, it had, you had to get rid of the mine. Yeah, but let somebody else do it. <laughs> I'm tired of getting blown up. When well, the mines came to the top, did that, did they, did they yeah. explode automatically? No, you had it? to shoot them with uh, those uh, 20 millimeter uh, gun gun bolts. Well, did you have to go down and, and cut any of those? Little ones? They came on up. They came on up. Thank goodness, we had one that. Uh, scrape the side of a ship. But the thing about those mines that had been, been put in there in 1926, and they were so, so, a lot of them were so rusted that you couldn't blow them up or anything. Uh, they were hard to, you know. And, and, and the, the little thing that detonate, the detonate nation. The horns that yeah. they got on them. I started to bring one of them things. They had the one that Alma sent it down there in that uh, base out by the road, but I hadn't seen one since then. You mean a mine? I mean a mine. Mine. That floats. A floating mine. They, uh, but they got sophisticated, like uh, uh, they wanted a ship to go in there to uh, uh, the main uh, harbor there in, in Japan, and it, they were scared of what they had dropped. We had dropped in uh, explosives that were supposed to lay it in the, in the thing. And then when something come by with metal, 
they're supposed to point to it and cut loose and come out. And they, the only way they could free that place up, so the ship and, they, and everything, they could go in there. This was after the war. They loaded out a big uh, freighter or something with lumber and everything and went in there. But they they didn't, they must not have ordered. Well, did you go to Tokyo Bay where they had the signing? Were you there when they back off? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They a <laughs> they little old mine sweep boy. Or, uh, How many people are on a mine sweep? Back then, uh, back the then we had about, I'd say there was 75. Well, do they still have, I guess they do, yeah. they gotta have something. Uh, they were 30 feet wide and then, uh, uh, I think 120 feet long. Were they made out of wood? No, metal. Now that they do have YMSs that are mine sweepers, they didn't have nothing but wood, but I wasn't on one of them. The one I was on was metal. Well, they, they, uh, no, and the reason small. I mentioned the wood, because that, that would, that some, maybe it was the Germans that had a, a metallic mine that would Magnetic. Be, magnetic. Magnetic, yeah. And then the British found a way to degauss their ships. Yes. And so they'd run like a current around their ships and then yeah, we had those on our, or our metal, the uh, cable we'd put out, did on each side, and put out an electric uh, uh, signal that if they were to any down there, they would come up and and uh, hit that mm -hmm. that cable out there. Well, but you didn't lose any ships from. We were extremely lucky. Uh, and back in those days, and I'm the same way right now, see, I was a Christian when I went in the Navy. And I had the idea, and I still got the idea, that you can't hurt me. All you can do is kill me because I'm going to him when it's over with, so uh, don't worry about it. And I didn't, and that's the reason I did a lot of things that I wouldn't have done. I think a long, long time about it nowadays. So. But you came back home after the war. Yeah. Came back to Georgia. Come you got to back. tell us about going. Well, you went, no? You went, you went to Georgia <laughs> Tech. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I was supposed to go to Georgia Tech. Um, the, uh, they had a, uh, they were going to, uh, they sent this thing out to the people in the, in the Navy to get some Navy pilots trained and everything. And uh, I took the test and uh, I passed. And so they flew me from the minesweeper uh, to Pearl Harbor. Well, I went to Oak Okinawa and got on an airplane and flew me from Okinawa to to um, to Hawaii. And when I got to Hawaii, I was supposed to get another uh, air to the United States, but I got stuck on the Sarasota, <laughs> which was an aircraft yeah. carrier. <laughs> It took every day and uh, weeks later, and a long time, before I got to the States. And uh, I finally got to Georgia Tech, and I was supposed to uh, get my flight training in school and, and everything there. And I didn't have any trouble with Georgia Tech's courses. And all of a sudden, this fellow calls me up and uh, told me to report to the office that he was at there on Georgia Tech. And because my name was Olinger, he said, I, I wanted, he quizzed me about, my, did I have any kin people up north or anything like that? And I told him no. All the Olingers I knew were in the south, but he wasn't satisfied. He was mad, this Olinger <laughs> that made him, hurt him or did something to him, made him real mad. And he said, he's gonna take it out on me. So he could have said, I, you, you know for sure you're going to get kicked out of, out of this uh, flight training school. I said, okay, that's fine with me. And uh, I'd done that by had it anyway, uh, you know. And I, when I first uh, passed that test, and, and was, it was real, real exciting to think about going. And then after I come to the States and the war was over and everything, 
thing like that, I says, why keep on messing around? And so he was <coughs> going to give me a hard time. So I went back and sure enough, they give me papers and sent me to, down uh, where they were de decommissioning ships uh, in multiple balls and pumping air in them and this and down there uh, it was just out from uh, Houston I'm trying to think of the place uh, where they had them all 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 the decommissioned ships were on this uh, by this river and everything but uh, that's where they sent me and then there I got my papers to go to to uh, uh, South Carolina to get discharged, I think. And that wound it up. And you came on the bank, back to bank? Yep. They, they gave me money and I hitchhiked all the way. I stayed ahead of the bus. What do you get? You, you could have gone to, did you go to college on the GI Bill? Uh, I started to and then I said, hey, I didn't need to. I was working with, uh, I got a job with the uh, bank here, because Jack Bauer had a had a uh, mill out here and lumber and everything. And they sent me out there, and you know, I could uh, uh, what they call a lumber checker. Yeah, I could do that, and uh, I went out there and worked with him for about I guess two years. Yeah, Jack Junior. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And then. So you been here the whole time? I mean, well, no, because uh, I I went in, I quit working with Jack and I got a job with uh, Minerals and Chemicals and worked down there uh, when they, when they had a cow signer and all that, and then uh, they closed that thing down and and no, I I was selling Miracle Man cookware when I was working at Minerals and Chemicals. It got to be me so much money that. I, Quit and went with a mill, uh, with Miracle Made Cookware and made boo coodles of money selling that. Had sales organizations under me and all that. But you've had an interesting life, Gene. I have. I've enjoyed every yeah. moment of it. Yeah. People don't understand. I don't worry about anything. I don't have a well, care about anything. And uh, I don't get upset. And I never had a Koki Palmolive hired me later on as a troubleshooter for him. And I had 13 Western states plus an Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, and I enjoyed working with them, but I didn't. They talk about being under pressure with a high paying job and all that. I ain't never been myself under pressure. If you know what you're doing, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> and you shoot straight. I never, I hate anybody to lie to me. Yeah, we all do, yeah. I don't care whether it's about this or anything else. And that's. Is there anything else you'd like to put into this? No, but there's okay. things that I could be made to put into it that they'd, the day he would send me off. No, we I'd wouldn't. be back in. in no, we would. No, I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, they forbid me from talking about. Well, you're not the only ones that we've had that because it's yeah. been never no. go so far. To and I, and I, I don't mind that, you know, because. Uh, Back in them days, they were worried about them. You talked about things that you probably wasn't supposed to. And I know I did things that, that the old man did, didn't want me to talk about. But he was good to me. Yeah, you yeah, mean Captain of the, uh, the mine. Well, did you ever know what happened to the pivot? Did I, I guess it got um, decommissioned and... It had to be decommissioned because it was in service uh, for a long time. The, uh, do y'all ever get to, do you ever see anybody that was in, in the, You have to remember that I'm a loner. The, uh, I don't have a lot of friends, never have. I got, you know, some people that are, if I need You got them, Sarge, I can yeah. tell you that. Yeah, I can, well I mean I, but what I'm saying is I'm not one of these that goes around and has a bunch of buddies and everything oh, and no. tells everybody what happened in there. I talk more to y'all than I've ever, well, no, I ain't talked to anybody when I come in, but I'm not. But thank you for what you did, Jim. Glad to. And I thank you for what you did. I enjoyed it. 
I yes, hope so. I did, and glad God was behind me. He was. And, and you know, if if people would uh, be saved and, and go through life that way, they wouldn't have any problem. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kill that thing. <laughs>